have a bit of problem with the USR. Originally, I was going to go and show you what the 1080p looked like next to the 4K. I was going to go for subtle differences, show you how to reframe, see if there's any color differences between 1080p and 4K. And as I was doing my testing, I realized the problem was very deep. And as it turns out that the 1080p coming out of the USR is not great. It's not even good. Let's get into it. How I conducted my testing? My testing was conducted by shooting all I-2397 FPS, basically 24 FPS. I shot full HD, full sensor width, and I shot lots of 4K sharpness settings on the standard profile all the way from 0 to 7, and I put them next to each other to show what the differences were. Due to the fact that 1080p and 4K have different crop factors, uh, there are three different ways to do the testing. Um, number one, you can put the camera into the same position, use the same lens, and just don't care about the framing. Number two, use the same lens, use different camera position, keep the framing the same. And the third way of doing this is using the same camera position, use the same framing, but use different focal lengths for uh, 4K, the 1.6 crop, and Full HD, the 1.0 crop. There are two ways of doing that. You can either swap primes, use a 50 for the Full HD, use a 35 for the 4K. And there's another way, use a zoom that covers both. So I thought that to keep the number of variables as low as possible, I'm going to do the first Keep the camera position the same, don't care about the framing, use the same lens. I might do the second version where I use uh, different camera positions so that the framing is the same. I don't think that's more fair, but I'm not sure. We'll see. To give each resolution the best possible chance of providing as much as they possibly can, I shot everything 24 frames a second, all into frame, basically the highest bandwidth that I could possibly give it. This resulted in huge files and all it did was remove the bottleneck that could possibly have occurred. I did this everywhere where I could, with the exception of 720p, which is IPB, so compressed, and there's no 24p option, so I went with the 30p option there. As I went on testing different uh, things happening in different resolutions, I was expecting to see a high quality lossy compression from the full sensor width to the 1080p footage. That did not end up happening. What I did see was a 1080p footage that gives me the impression that it has more cons than it has pros. I tested the sharpness between each mode using an A4 printed version of the ISO sharpness chart. This adds a new variable where the printer resolution is the highest limit that can be used to test the sharpness of the lens sensor setup. In practice, it didn't end up causing a problem because 1080p footage falls apart way earlier than that. Think of it as a comparison tool rather than a measurement tool. Colors. I heard rumors that if you scale down 4K resolution to 1080p resolution, you have access to more color data, essentially increasing the bit depth of the resulting 1080p footage. I wanted to test this as well, and I found this to be untrue at least in the case of DaVinci Resolve, the way it uh, downscales footage. Even with the lack of added color information, the 4K footage gives a nice looking image because the bandwidth that the Kodak uses in the USR to compress it gives it more latitude to store the data. So it falls apart later, but not because it's a 4K footage, but because it's a Kodak that has a higher bandwidth. And that brings us to the file sizes. I expected the file sizes to be different, and that ended up being true. The 4K resolution file clocks in at about 480 megabits, 450 megabits a second. 1080p footage is about 95, 100, 110 megabits per second before compression. All I. To make it fair between each resolution, 
prior to pulling them into the timeline, I uh, converted everything to 1080p and where transcoding was needed, I exported the footage into DNX HR HQX 444 10-bit. So basically the highest quality uh, intermediate codec that I could find. And this resulted in huge files, massive files. But at least it was in the bottleneck in the comparison. I did it so that when I zoom into each footage, there's no added benefit to the 4K footage just because it is 4K. So I even the field, everything starts at 1080p before inserting. So in real life, when you're working with a 4K file, if you don't cut it down to 1080p first, you get even more benefits to sharpness and you can zoom it better, you can crop it harder, that sort of thing. I took the same scene, shot it in 4K, shot it in 1080p, and then I rendered both into a H.264 file using the native renderer in DaVinci Resolve. And I set the maximum peak bandwidth to ridiculous 150 megabits per second to remove any bottlenecks. The resulting file size was about 90 megabits per second for um, the 4K region and about 17 megabits per second for the other ones. There's about a 10%-ish difference, making the 4K a bit heavier, but not by a huge amount. I'm assuming that if you look at how the footage looks, much of the information stored in the 1080p footage is digital sharpening, lens selection. And this is where it all begins to matter. Should you buy all APS-C lenses, and throw all your full frame lenses away. Just get the cheap APS-C ones. They're lighter, they're designed for a small sensor size. Well, I don't think you should go either for only full frame lenses and only APS-C lenses, even if you shoot only video with EUSR. APS-C lenses can get lighter, cheaper. There are options that are not available in uh, full frame sizes, such as the Sigma 18-35, which I'm using to record this video, or for vloggers, the 10-18 IS is a really good option. It really beats out, on the USR anyway, the other wide-angle alternatives, such as the excellent, phenomenal 15-35 RF, very expensive, very good, or any of the older wide-angle lenses, the 16 to 35, the 17 to 40. Using the cheap 10 to 18, you get a better looking 4K, you get a better looking 1080p. Now, why should you then buy full frame lenses for this camera when the 4K coming out of the crop sensor is a lot better at 1080p than the 1080p that's intended? The thing is, Nothing operates in a vacuum, and that goes for this camera too. Canon has already announced uh, the R5, the R6 successors to this camera. We just don't know how they're going to perform in the full sensor width. But my bet is that they're going to fix the scaling, this line skipping, and we are going to get a much better performance in 4K, in 8K, in the R5, and in 1080p on the full size, the full width. As it is currently, if you're uh, intending to keep the R for the foreseeable future, I would not buy full frame lenses unless you do not care much about the detail, you do not care much about the sharpness itself, but do you want that full frame look, this uh, monster bokeh with the 50mm f1.2 RF lens is just something that you cannot replicate when shooting 4K and turning that into 1080p. Conclusion. The 1080p coming out of this camera is not the best in the market. It's not the best in the price range. It's not the best in half the price range. And it's not even the best 1080p coming out of the USR, to be frank. Scaling down from 4K to 1080p or using the video crop mode 1080p, which is basically a pixel bin version of the 4K footage, yields better results. I went as far as to test 720p been upscaled to 1080p and that looked very similar. The 1080p footage coming out of this camera in the full frame width setting looks more like the 720p than it does the 4k scaled down. So what should you do? Um, well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my 18-35 Sigma. That's just a brilliant lens on any camera 
on the EOSR does brilliantly. I might get a 10 to 18 IS for vlogging. It's cheap, it's lightweight, and for photography, I'm just going to keep sticking to my full frame lenses, the 50mm 1.2 on parallel, 35mm 1.8, very sharp for what it is, it's an IS lens, it's just amazing. And for video, I'll keep shooting 4K crop sensor, even when the desired output is only 1080p. Bye. <laughs>